What's up? Welcome to your daily Buckeye Blitz for a Wednesday, the hump day, November 15, 2023. Well, said four. Why did I say that? Looking at a four, that's why. 2023, it's been a long season. It's been a long week. It's only Wednesday. Anyways, um, hey, don't forget, hit the buckeyecast.com. Time is winding down for you to get your Beat Michigan shirts. Your Harbaugh is a cheater shirts, all the, the good uh, family favorites and uh, hit the hits. Um, I like playing the hits. But today we're talking Ryan Day press conference. Oh, everything is still on sale on the site. And if you prefer to go to Etsy, we have a shop at Etsy. So just search the Buckeye cast on Etsy. Uh, if you don't know what Etsy is, ask a woman in your life um, or find a woman in your life, put her in your life and then ask her what Etsy is. Or, hey, could be a good pickup line. If you walk up to a chick at a bar, say, hey, do you know anything about Etsy? And then soon, you know, you're in bed and you bought a bunch of Ohio State shit from me. Anyways, uh, here we go. Ryan Day Press Conference highlights. Tomorrow's Jim Knowles. We'll talk defense and today's offense and uh, Ryan Day. So let's start it off. How do you feel the offense is developing? Well, I think our team, um, you know, has had an identity from the get-go, I think, on offense. You know, you, you're starting to see it uh, forge itself a little bit more on, on the offensive side of the ball, probably. But, um, I mean, this team plays hard, plays physical. It's got great leadership. Um, and, you know, on offense, I think um, you just see in the combination of the run game and, and the ball on the perimeter, um, when you have all the weapons back, and now Kyle's got you know, a bunch of games under his belt, um, offensive line, you know, is making progress every week. So I think all that comes into play. Okay, up next, uh, is Donovan Jackson playing better this season? Yeah, I think so. He's created champion here the last couple of weeks. And, you know, everyone's looking to play their best football now. But, um, you know, it's the combination of run game and pass game that you have to be able to um, you know, do both. and. You know, it's it's different when you have two new guys on both sides of you there, just the combination blocks, the communication, how you handle movement in the pass game, how you handle movement in the run game. So I think a little bit of it's that, a little bit of it's just, you know, now he's into his next year of maturity. He's seen a lot more, and um, yeah, I mean, we're going to need him to play really well down the stretch. Okay, next up, um, is the offensive line gelling together? I think there was probably a lot of things that, that – um, you know, along the journey that has taken us to where we are right now. But um, I know that anytime, you know, somebody new next to you, there's a different, there's a, there's an adjustment phase there. But, but I, I do think that, you know, they're more and more comfortable every single time they're out there. And now that we're in November, you know, they've got a good body of work under their belt. So now again, now we're expecting them to go play the best. All right. Um, how about the uh, versatility of Ohio State's uh, skill players? And we'll follow that up with uh, some talk about uh, Xavier Johnson. Yeah, those guys can can uh, do multiple things, and anytime you you see that, um, boy, it can it can bring bring a lot of different um, you know variables to the table. You look at you know the way that Cade's you know running routes and, and blocking and protection. Same thing with G Scott. You're seeing our receivers get involved with the run game. Um, you're seeing, you know, multiple oh, well, receivers carry the ball. You saw Marvin carry the ball. You've seen X carry the ball. You've seen Mecca carry the ball. Um, you know, in you know, you're seeing Trey line up as a receiver at times. I mean, all those things, um, you know, help you when you're trying to attack a defense when they can do multiple things. Sure. Yeah, no, he's he's a mismatch in in a lot of different areas, and and that's that's our job as coaches to 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 put him in those situations and find try to find creative ways to get those matchups. But um, you know, ultimately, it comes down to to blocking and taking care of the football and executing. But um, yeah, anytime we can, you know, put these guys in situations like that, you know, that kind of like the, I think the one you're talking about is the, is the you know the, the throw down the sideline there, and you know, um, kind of got set up after a couple of runs that way, and um, so, yeah, the guys put it on the field well, did a good job protecting it, and they they did a nice job there. And, you know, uh, if you watch the film, I think Marvin was double covered there, so that really opened up, you know, Xavier on, on the linebacker. Okay. And uh, what does Kyle bring to the table from a uh, 
off the field kind of not physical, but more of the intangible tools. Yeah, you saw his productive play on the field. You saw his size, his arm strength, um, you know, intelligence, um, you know, and just had a good way of leadership with, with the players. You know, the guys in his class, he was the first one to jump on board and then brought a lot of guys with him. Uh, once he got in the building, you know, he was with Marvin and Mecca in here on the drawing board right away, learning the offense and, and getting involved, throwing with those guys, great work ethic. Um, so all of those things, you know, uh, led to it. Okay. And uh, how do you feel about uh, Kyle's faster starts in games recently? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think every time you're out there, you gain more and more confidence because um, it's not new anymore and then it slows down. So um, I think the last couple of game, games have started out um, finding the speed of the game really well, uh, much more efficient early on. And, and that's led us to get, you know, certainly in this, this last game, you know, getting, you know, good momentum. And then I thought it was great to get a two minute drive going, um, you know, at the end of the first half. All right. Uh, and how the hell did Devin Brown get injured in warmups last week? Um, he's all right. Just, just a bit of a setback there in the warmups, but, um, you know, hoping to see, you know, he get back on the field this week and um, survive warmups. Next up, how did you like the play of Lincoln Keenholz? Just the, in the couple snaps he was out there, it didn't look too big for him. I, I just thought he belonged. Um, he's still trying to figure it all out. Um, you know, he got an earful for the first time on the field after one of the plays, which was good. And he, he you know, he had an answer. I liked it. You know, he, he came right back with why he did what he did. Um, but we'll see. It's just a start. But it, it was just good to see him out there uh, getting some plays under his belt. And, um, you know, there was some some good plays he had out there. All right. Uh, more health updates. Lathan Ransom could return or out for the season. What's the deal? Uh, th there's a chance he can come back, um, you know, this year. Um, but, uh, you know, it doesn't look like it's going to be any time in the next couple of weeks. All right. How about Mike Hall? Uh, I don't really have an update on Mike right now. That doesn't sound good. Um, how is Emeka developing or how is his health developing? Uh, he's getting stronger and stronger each week. Uh, we decided to hold him in the second half to continue that progress, but he's getting as close, uh, closer every week to being 100. And um, the feedback I got this week was that, you know, he feels better this week than he did last week. And that's the goal. Um, you know, got, look more explosive on film in this past game. And so we'll keep bringing them along. Um, everything that our folks say here is just keep pushing them, keep getting that thing stronger, keep working. And, and he is, he's getting stronger every single week. So, um, you know, hopefully we take another step this week and we're as close as we can to 100%. All right. Uh, now we saw uh, Matthew Jones play a few snaps at center against Michigan State this past weekend. Uh, would he be another option? Yeah, I, for, I forget if he had or not. I don't remember, but I know we worked him at center uh, at times, and, um, and we just felt like at that time it was good to get him some work at center um, and just you know get Enoch in the game and just see what that looked like in a game. Um, you know, we had a pretty comfortable lead at that point and felt like it was good to do. Uh, evaluated it, and then there were some good snaps there. So um, you know, it's always good to kind of in an opportunity like that go see you know if if we needed to make a change, what that would look like. All right, and following up on that, um, is Carson Hensman not developing as quickly as he should? I think he's the youngest. So, um, you know, he's probably made, you know, from where he started to where he is now, he's made certainly a bunch of progress, but but he's also the youngest. So, um, you know, he's in here every day. He's, he's busting his tail to get better, and um, you know, he's handled some some difficult environments you know, so far this year as a, as a red shirt freshman. So, um, you know, we think that he's got a very bright future ahead of him and he's going to continue to get stronger and better uh, across the board His communication, you know, all those things. So everything, every time he's out there, you know, it's, it's an investment in his future. Yeah. Right now we're going to continue to move forward as we have. Um, but every week we're evaluating to see what gives us the best chance to win. So, um, but as of right now, we're going to continue to where we are, where we're at right now. Okay, uh, let's talk defense here. Uh, is Perry Eliano preparing the safety position to replace Lathan Ransom? 
Uh, well, I, I think you, you evaluate everything at the end of the season, but everybody's responsible to make sure that they have uh, production at their position and then depth along the way. Um, you can't go pick anybody up off of waivers in college football, so you have to build depth. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that. Um, but a big part of it is development. And um, you know, certainly we're going to miss Lathan, but you know, our, our guys are confident, you know, with, with, you know, the guys in the room. And um, so, you know, we're just going to forge forward and with the guys that we have and um, challenge those guys to play at a high level. All right. Uh, let's talk Sonny Styles. What's he bring to the table? Yeah, you know, he's got, he's got a lot of versatility and can do many things, but uh, it's going to, you know, be important for the other guys to step up in those areas where, you know, where does he fit in? Um, and, you know, you just have to feel good at all the other spots back there. And then, and then Sonny, you know, can take on a lot of responsibility, but we also want to make sure that he's playing fast and doing a great job. So we don't want to overload him, but at the same time, he can do a lot. And that's important for the guys around him to make sure that they're, you know, playing at championship level. Okay. How about uh, Jelani Thurman's play in uh, garbage time last week? Well, we got to make sure that uh, if he flashes a first down, he actually gets it. So that's, that's the first coaching point for Jelani. And so I think Coach Bailey said, okay, that's enough of that, Jelani. Let's just catch the ball and hand the ball to the official. So that was the first coaching point. But it was great to see him out there. You can see um, his athleticism, size, uh, power. You can see him, you know, he's got really good hands. Uh, he's got a very bright future ahead of him. He understands that the tight end position is a developmental position, but you know, he's put a year in now, so you know he's going to get to the point where he's going to get on the field here real soon. And uh, the talent is there. And if he keep, continues on the same path that he's on, he's going to have a special career here at Ohio State. All right, let's talk uh, hardware. Why should Marv be the front runner for the Heisman Trophy? I think I've said it before that um, the Heisman Trophy goes to the most outstanding player in the country. Uh, I know there's a lot of great players out there i get to see him every day i think he is the most outstanding player in the country um and he's you know right from the jump came in with a work ethic that um you know really transcended throughout the whole team you know just what he's done and and now his production as well so uh you know he wants to be great um i know that you can just tell it and his actions back that up and you know, certainly his production speaks for itself on the field and what he's doing, and, and he makes everybody on that field better. All right. Um, and what does Minnesota present as a challenge this weekend? You know, PJ does a really good job. You know, Minnesota is well coached. Um, I really respect what PJ does as a coach and their program and their culture, and they're going to come in here and play really hard. So you know, we have to match that. And, you know, it's a Big Ten road or a Big Ten, um, you know, game here in November. And, you know, so we have to we have to do a great job of preparing for it like any other game, any other game. It has no uh, bearing what's coming on, coming down the future. We got to be, be on point right now and continue to build on our future. And and that's it. So um, starts with Tuesday today. We'll have a meet, team meeting here at 2.30 and we get back to work. Okay. And. We all know November is for contenders. Uh, how have you presented that to the team? I, I feel like we have, but I also feel every, every year you just, you know, you're messaging and um, you evaluate things, just, you know, how you, how you want to messaging it to the team, you know, that it is a build as the season goes on. And I think the guys um, can feel that uh, it's been clearly communicated that way that we've got um, to build every week and that momentum and, you know, it kind of snowballs over time, the consistency of everything that you're doing on a daily basis so that we're, um, you know, at our best at the end of the season. And so it's, it's just been, um, you know, a messaging point to the team, something that we can, you know, tangibly like almost grab onto that, Hey, we're getting better every week and we know we got to be at our best at the end of the season um, because that's when it matters the most. Okay. Speaking of offensive line, how is Josh Simmons progressing? Yeah, no, he's, he's certainly is progressing. You can see the talent, um, you know, when you know, some unbelievable clips, just feet, uh, power, um, hands, it, it's all there. And so it, it's, you know, every week it's coming together a little bit more for him. And same thing, just like a quarterback, it starts to slow down, you know, all the different things that go on. And um, so he, he can be as good as he wants to be. Okay. And uh, who were the biggest uh, freshman standouts from the Michigan State game? I thought um, Jermaine 
Matthews again, you know, got his hand on the ball, uh, ran down on special teams, did a good job there. Um, it was good to see Jelani make that catch. It was good to see Lincoln, you know, handle himself well. Um, I think of who else? I'm mean, Lee Carford. You know, I mean, for his first start, I thought, you know, um, you know, did some really good things, great out of champion. That was that was great. Um, I'd say those are probably the guys that stick out right offhand. Okay. And uh, we left McCord in a little longer maybe. Um, is that because you didn't have Devin Brown? You don't know what you're going to get to you, to you go out there, and it was probably, what, midway through the third quarter. I felt like there was a lot of football left. Um, you know, at that point, I hadn't we hadn't had Lincoln in the game, so we didn't know what that was going to look like. So we decided to probably hang on a little bit longer. And then we started that drive, and then after we got a couple first downs, decided it was the right time to put Lincoln in the game. Um, if Devin was available, he probably would have been in the game a little bit sooner. All right. All right, folks, that's all from the coach. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we'll have Jim, no Jim Knowles talking about the defense in a uh, lively discussion. So talk to you later. Go Bucks.